So we left our application like this last time, and if you actually quit out of it, don't worry, I'll quit out of it now. You can quit out of it. Make sure you're in the correct directory where your test app or whatever you named it lives, and just run npm start. And it will start up a web browser with the actual application running once again. So there it is. So I have this running, and right now I want to make some changes to it. So what I'm going to do is switch to Visual Studio Code, which I have running right here. And start up Visual Studio Code. And if you have a welcome screen, you can just close it. And the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is go to the Code menu and find Preferences. And it's in a similar place on Windows, but you can find it. And what you're looking for is Extensions. And I'm going to install an extension. And then what I'm going to look for is called React. Just type in React you want this one, ES7 React Redux, so on and so forth. Install that. It will just make things a little bit easier for us when we're done. So once it's installed, this will change to uninstall, so you can close this. And click on this icon in the upper left-hand corner, and we're going to open the folder we just created. And I put mine on my desktop, so I'll go to my desktop, which is here somewhere. There it is and I called it React Apps, and I'm going to open Test App and open this folder. And you'll see right away there's quite a bit of stuff in here. We have a source folder, we have a public folder. Let's look inside the public folder to start with. Inside of that I have a lot of files. A robots.txt, which is kind of standard when you're deploying something to the internet to tell search engines how to pay attention to your content. The fav icon is just an icon. We can ignore that. This is the one I'm interested in, index.html. So I'm going to open that file. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of comments here that tell you exactly what is where. And some of the things might look a little different to you if you're coming from straight HTML. For example, here on line 5, percent public underscore URL percent. Well, that, of course, is substituted for the actual path to your public URL at some point. So you can ignore that for right now. But if you actually look at this file, if I was to remove the comments, so I'll remove these comments and these ones and these ones, you'll see there's almost nothing in there. You have, in between the body tags, you have a no script tag that tells people that don't have JavaScript enabled that they need to enable JavaScript to see anything. But the only other thing you have is div with an ID of root and nothing inside of it. And yet, when I look at my web browser, I have all this content. So where is this coming from? Well, it's actually coming from, and this is the other important folder, the source folder. Inside of here, I have a whole lot of JavaScript files and CSS files. I have an SVG file, which is an image file. And of course, that's the spinning image we see on our web page. But there's a lot of things that we can change here. Now what I'm going to do, and this will seem strange to you, but I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff. I'm going to delete setup uh, test.js. I'll delete that. I'll delete the logo. I'll delete the app test.js. I'll delete the app.js, and I'll leave everything else. I'll leave, actually, I'll delete the app CSS too. Delete all of that, okay? So I'm going to right-click on it and choose delete. It will move those to the trash, and they're gone. And now, if I switch back to my web browser, you'll see I have an error, fail to compile, and it failed to compile for a really simple reason. So let's go back to our IDE, and let's open up this index.js file. And the reason it failed is here at the very top. This is a JavaScript file, and if you're familiar with JavaScript, there'll be nothing new here to you, because you'll understand how imports work and so forth, but if you don't, don't worry. All of this is causing us some grief, because it's referring to things that no longer exist. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything in it, okay? And I'll put instead this JavaScript directive, console.log, I am running, just so I know that something's running. Now this, as you know, doesn't actually write anything to the uh, web browser, so if we switch back to our web browser right now, you'll see that it's a blank screen. And it's a blank screen because we're not actually writing any HTML. We have an empty body tag, or we have a body tag with an empty div in there. But if I open the developer tools, so I'll open those, and look at the console, you'll see I am running is here. So now it's actually doing something of value. 
Now clearly, if you're taking a course and using React and Go, and this is your end product, you're a little disappointed. So we probably want to do a little bit better than this. Let's go back to our IDE, and let's put our very first React component in this file. So I'll select all and delete, and I'm going to type some stuff that might not make sense to you, but don't be concerned. We'll be going through this in detail as time goes on. But right now, I want to write a really simple React component. And in React, you'll be using components all the time. So first of all, I'm going to import something into my JavaScript file. I'll import React, which was installed when we created our application. So I'll import React, comma, and then in curly braces, I will put component, because we're going to be using React components, so we have to have that. And we're importing that from React. Okay, so there's some logic which is now available to our application. And down here, I will create a class, a JavaScript class, and I'll call it app. You can call it whatever you want, but call it app if you want to follow along. And it extends the one we just imported called component. Okay? And then in curly braces, inside of that, every React component must have one function called render. It has to have that or else it's not going to work. So I'm going to create a function called render. And render just returns some content. So what I'm going to return is, and this is going to look odd if you've written JavaScript before, but I'm going to return, it looks like HTML, and it's almost HTML, but it's something else. But let's just type it right now and see how it works. I'll type div, and then I'll hit return to get to the next line, and then I'll put an h1 tag, and we'll do the obligatory hello world logic that you expect to have in any time you're learning a new programming language or a new development environment. And then I'll end it with the semicolon. Technically, you don't have to, but I do it all the time. And I may as well confess right now that even though it's not necessary, as this course goes on, I will almost certainly always put the trailing semicolon. And it hurts absolutely nothing. So I can save this. And that's great. It seems like it's right. But I have this render function, this, this, this app component with a render function that returns something that looks suspiciously like HTML. But at no point is it actually writing this to the browser window. Even though it's rendering it, we've got some content we can put to a browser. We need to explicitly tell React, put this in the browser window. In order to do that, I have to import another thing. I have to report React DOM. Now, DOM stands for Document Object Model. And if you've done any work in HTML and JavaScript, you're familiar with the uh, Document Object Model. But React actually has its own document object model. And we'll go be going over that in detail as time goes on. But right now, I want to import React DOM from React DOM. Not surprisingly. OK. And down here, below my class, I'm going to call a method on that React DOM. React DOM dot, and it's render. And I have to tell it two things. First of all, what component do you want to render? And where in the HTML do you want to render it? Now, my component is called app, but the syntax for calling that component is actually like this, app, and then a closing uh, pointy bracket. So an opening pointy bracket, app, and then a slash closing pointy bracket. That's my first argument. And I want to put this, if you look at our index.js, or index.html, I want to put it right here in that div with the ID of root. So back in my index.js, my second argument to react dom.render is get me a reference to the ID root in my document. And we use the standard JavaScript document dot get element by ID and case matters in JavaScript. So pay attention to how you type this. And then in parentheses, root and close my parentheses and type my trailing semicolon and save this. And when I go back to my web browser now, it puts hello world in there. Now, that is our first React component. And it's not terribly exciting, but we'll be going through this syntax in a lot of detail in the coming lectures. And you're going to become intimately familiar, not just with components, but also with something known as the React lifecycle, which is pretty important to know. One final thing that I'm going to draw to your attention. Even though this file, index.js, has the extension JS, technically speaking, 
from a React point of view, this is actually called a JSX file. And JSX file supports this syntax, which looks suspiciously like HTML in a lot of cases, in this case certainly, is simple HTML, but there's a slightly different syntax required for certain things. For example, attributes in an HTML tag. We can't use class because class is actually a reserved word in JavaScript. So instead we use class name with a lowercase c and an uppercase n. But we'll be going through that as time goes on. Right now we have successfully installed our first React application. We've deleted a lot of things that were installed by default. And we have created and deployed our very first React component. All right, we'll be building on this project as time goes on. And let's get started in the next lecture.